Hi guys. <clears throat> it is a spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful, postcard perfect today, at least morning. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we are headed to supposedly 87 degrees today here in the Point Lonesome Swamp and the Oasis of Freedom. My guess is we're going to hit 90 again here in February and that would be Saturday, February 26th, 2022. And since it is Saturday, it is time for our descent into the twilight zone where we go into our uh, weekly <coughs> apocaloptimism hopium roundup rant where we go and look at all of the various clueless morons and dreamers and I guess solar panel and windmill salesmen and electric vehicle salesmen and lithium battery salesmen uh, talking about oh don't forget asphalt salesmen but we're gonna start with uh, one of the single uh, most egregious <clears throat> opium peddlers of them all that would be the apocaloptimist that us doomers love to hate that would be Michael Mann this uh, this blowhard you know the darling of the mainstream media and so Michael Mann has a new uh, essay in the Washington Post this is how uh, this is the ultimate marriage between hopium and the mainstream media. Michael Mann talking about how we are not doomed in the Washington Post. And then we're going to look at several other stories from the, uh, from the Twilight Zone. Take it away, Michael Mann, and explain to us doomers why we are not doomed. How a little discussed revision of climate science could help avert doom. We can reduce global temperatures faster than we once thought if, if we act now. And of course what they have to prove how we're going to do this is this probably 100 acre solar panel array. Yes. All right. Take it away, Michael. One of the biggest obstacles to avoiding global climate breakdown is that so many people think there is nothing we can do about it. They point out that record-breaking heat waves, such as the one going on today, right now in Florida, they point out that record-breaking heat waves, fires, and storms are already devastating communities and economies throughout the world. And they have long been told correctly that temperatures will keep rising for decades to come, no matter how many solar panels, like the ones in the photograph at the top of the article, no matter how many solar panels replace oil derricks or how many meat eaters go vegetarian, no wonder they think we're doomed. But, but climate scientists actually, climate science actually does not say this. To the contrary, the best climate science you have probably never heard of suggests that humanity can still limit the damage to a fraction of the worst projections if, and we admit this is a big if, governments, businesses, and all of us take strong actions starting now. Strong actions being, of course, building these 100-acre solar panel fields and these, uh, and, and, and these forests of giant wind turbines and electric vehicles. This is Michael Mann's definition 
of taking strong action. Yes, for many years, the scientific rule of thumb was that a sizable amount of temperature rise was locked in to Earth's climate system. Scientists believed <clears throat> that even if humanity hypothetically halted all heat trapping emissions overnight, carbon dioxide's long lifetime in the atmosphere combined with the sluggish thermal properties of the oceans would nevertheless keep global temperatures rising for 30 to 40 more years or 30,000 to 40,000 more years as the case may be. Since shifting to a zero carbon global economy would take at least a decade, yes, would take at least a decade or two decades, temperatures were bound to keep rising for at least another half century or another half millennium. But guided by subsequent research, scientists have dramatically revised that lag time estimate down to as little as three to five years. That is an enormous difference that carries paradigm shifting <coughs> and broadly <laughs> Broadly, broadly uh, hopeful implications for how people, such as the airboat drivers, you know, th those kind of people, for how people, especially young people, think and feel about their cl the climate emergency and how societies can, can respond to it. This revised science means that if, if humanity slashes emissions to zero, global temperatures will stop rising almost immediately. You damn doomer. <clears throat> Listen to the man. It's in the Washington Post. It's in the mainstream media. There you go. To be clear, to be clear, this is not a get out of jail free card. Global temperatures also will not fall if emissions go to zero. So the planet's ice will keep melting and sea levels will keep rising, but global temperatures will stop their relentless climb buying humanity time to devise ways to deal with such unavoidable impacts. In short, we are not irrevocably doomed, or at least we don't have to be if we take bold, rapid action. Yes, thank you, Michael Mann for clarifying that, uh, so you better believe a huge part, probably uh, the, uh, the centerpiece of that uh, hopium is carbon storage. And uh, for anybody hoping to make uh, money off of the collapse of a planet, carbon storage, right here from the independent. Forget electric vehicles. Carbon storage is now the hottest technology trend to invest in. Yes. Carbon storage and removal, the process of sucking it from the air, have become among the hottest technology trends in the climate investing game. Yes, and here's one called drone seed. Drone seed. Uh, anyway, so they go through all of the, uh, looking at all of these uh, planet eaters investing in carbon storage. Uh, this is some vent venture capitalist quote. There is a ton of money coming in to this sector. Yes. Indeed, in the first two weeks of this year, 
both Wall Street and Silicon Valley popped the cork on billions of dollars of new investments in renewable energy, carbon storage, energy efficiency in buildings, and every other form of environmental, social, and governance ideas. Yes, Gene Rogers, one of the pioneers of sustainability accounting, who founded the, sust <laughs> the Sustainable Accounting Standards Board, yes, just became global head of these environmental, social, and governance ESG ideas at Blackstone Group, which then promptly announced a $3 billion investment in the largest private player in the wind and solar markets. Goldman Sachs invested $25 million in a Toronto-based energy storage company. The Carlyle Group just announced more than $100 million in investment in energy storage and electric vehicle charging station companies, while Bill Gates, while Bill Gates Breakthrough Energy Catalyst Group said it will invest $15 billion dollars into energy storage and renewable projects. Okay, you go Bill Gates, Blackstone, and the Carlisle Group. You can certainly say uh, thank that group for saving the planet. But of course, going hand in hand with this, don't forget the Build Back Better plan to save the planet. And uh, take a wild guess, one of the biggest winners, probably the biggest winner of them all in Joe Biden's Build Back Better to save the planet, that would be asphalt. Asphalt, pave the planet to save the planet. I love the slogan, pave the planet to save the planet, we need more asphalt on this planet to save ourselves from climate change. <clears throat> from the New York Times, right here, you read it in the New York Times, one of the infrastructure plan's biggest winners is the pavement you drive on. <clears throat> yes. Uh... Okay, the infrastructure package, the Build Back Better plan, allocates at least $350 billion over the next five years to highways and bridges. Yes. Um, the highway and bridge budget will pay for engineers, steel, concrete and other elements of the actual structures but lobbyist but lobbyist from the asphalt industry and transportation experts expect an outsized portion of the pavement spending to go to asphalt the material that paves 94% of America's roads and bridges. Yes. Uh, asphalt advocates hoping to counter the idea that asphalt hurts the environment has framed the material as an unlikely ally in combating climate change. Yes, the asphalt industry lobbyists are hoping to counter the idea that asphalt hurts the environment and in fact, paving the planet will save the planet. Yes. Um, anyway, 
I just want to, this is a long, uh, long involved article. I just wanted to find uh, this uh, asphalt producers say they are excited about the prospect of five years of funding certainty which will allow them to hire and expand. Yes, okay. So, uh, this is Dan Garcia, president of asphalt producer C.W. Matthews, based in Marietta, Georgia. Uh, this is an example of how paving the planet will save the planet. D just so you understand how asphalt is an environmentally benign product that will combat climate change. Garcia's company operates 27 asphalt plants across the state of Georgia. Crushing rocks starting by crushing rocks mined from nearby quarries, combining those crushed rocks with sand and gravel, you know, coming from a sand pit and a gravel mine into a mix known as aggregate and cooking them with, as cooking them with asphalt, a viscous liquid derived from crude oil. The asphalt mix is then loaded onto 18-ton trucks that transport the mix to job sites. Yes. <sighs> that is how paving the planet will save the planet. I'm assuming uh, Michael Mann is cheering on the asphalt industry. Okay, this is one for a uh, colony of cells. Climate breakthrough. We have a climate breakthrough as bacteria breaks down carbon dioxide into carbon negative chemicals. Researchers have hailed a major step forward in avoiding a climate catastrophe by using bacteria to brew expensive chemicals that are widely used in industry from carbon dioxide. The process turns CO2 into acetone and isopropanol, two chemicals widely used in industry, which are normally produced from fossil fuels. Yes, this is the main ingredient in hand sanitizers for Corona Panic. Yes, by creating the chemicals from waste CO2, the process is carbon negative. Yes. Anyway. Uh, all right. I think we get it. But uh, forget bacteria when you have your own clothing. Your own clothing sucking carbon dioxide out of the air. Early money. A startup founded by two haughty twin sisters that is working on turning carbon emissions into fabrics raised four and a half million dollars in its seed round. Alright, asking the question, what if you could take some of the excess carbon dioxide in the air and turn it into clothes. That is what Ruby Laboratories is working on. The Sausalito startup has found a way to convert carbon emissions into naturally biodegradable textiles. 
Yes, Ruby's process involves taking carbon emitted by manufacturing plants and converting it into viscose, which is also known as rayon and is one of the world's most popular textiles. All right, what is going on? What kind of planet eating is happening down here? I hope I don't have to. Uh... Please leave, don't come up here during my rant. Two more stories. <clears throat> Brother Aaron sending me this one. Bees are explosively ejaculating to death during heat waves. This sounds like a real hopium-fueled article. Bees, meaning honeybees, are explosively ejaculating to death during heat waves. What is black and yellow and ejaculates until it dies during heat waves? Male bees, it turns out, and scientists, disturbed as they may be, have a solution. We have a solution for male bees ejaculating to death during heat waves. <clears throat> when the male bees get too hot, they convulse until they explosively ejaculate to death, <clears throat> and a phallus the size of their abdomen <clears throat> bursts from their lifeless bodies. Yes, it is disgusting and upsetting, but we can fix it. We can fix it, experts say. All right, the experts are on the case to fix the ejaculating bees. One solution is to keep the beehives cool during extreme heat, perhaps by using a polystyrene cover. Yes. Anyway, basically uh, wrapping the beehives in styrofoam uh, because once the in once the inside of the beehive reaches a critical mass, uh, it triggers uh, this e basically a masturbation because the ejaculation doesn't land where it's supposed to land because the male bees just explode. So we're just going to wrap the beehives of the planet in styrofoam and keep those ejaculating bees a little bit more under control. But guys, I hate to rain on your parade. I just have to uh, give a little bit of a reality check for uh, all of this crap. Uh, before we go, I hate to let you know, Michael Mann and all the rest of you investing in this unadulterated horseshit carbon capture. Bill Gates, Michael Mann, we got some bad news for you. Most carbon capture and reuse technology emits more CO2 than it captures. Most efforts to capture and reuse carbon dioxide in industry emit more CO2 than they capture, and they will not reduce emissions enough to comply with the Paris Agreement. Researchers from Radboud University in the Netherlands also warned that the technologies that would be sufficient are often not market ready. The concept of CO2 capture sounds promising. Capturing carbon dioxide from industrial gases, for example, and using it to produce chemicals, fuels, and other materials, such as clothing, for instance. But the Radbud University researchers found that 32 out of the 40 technologies, I guess, that they looked at emitted more carbon 
you know, in the process of trying to capture it than they captured. Yes. Anyway, then they break all of this down. So I hate to rain on Michael Mann and Bill Gates's parade. Uh, I, I honestly don't know what uh, Michael Mann uh, is up to. I, I mean, I, I'm trying to figure it out. You know, he has declared war against doomers. Uh, if you, you know, if you go on his website, if you question that man, uh, if you barely say, Michael, you will be banned. Uh, he'll just kick you off. Uh, it is Michael Mann's way or the highway. I don't know if Michael Mann actually believes one word of that horseshit uh, coming out of his fat mouth, but... Uh, Anyway, we, you better believe we will have the mainstream media lapdogs uh, lapping it up and parroting it back, as the Washington Post uh, and all the rest. The New York Times paved the planet to save the planet. <laughs> oh boy, but uh, I need to get out there and uh, enjoy this spectacularly gorgeous Saturday morning in the collapse of global industrial civilization before the February record heat wave starts cooking me because I do not want to explosively, anyway, get out there uh, and enjoy your own explosion while you still can. Bye guys.